<laughs> Namaste, welcome everyone. My name is Cassandra. This is my dog Luna. So now that I'm in this new studio, you guys have been asking me to have my pets in the videos more and you guys have seen Cleo, you've even seen Kit Kat, you know, it's pretty easy to have cats participate in your yoga class, but a lot of you really wanted to see Luna. So you know what? We're just going to see how it goes. I'm pretty sure she's just going to like distract me or jump on me the whole time. Um, but we're going to make the most of it. And if that's what you guys want, that's what you guys will get. Okay. So for this practice, this is a full body, truly intermediate vinyasa flow practice with as much emphasis on flexibility as strength. So a really well-rounded practice. So this class is actually inspired from a video I shared on Instagram. Sometimes I just film my own personal practice. And when I practice by myself at home, it's always improvised. So many people requested that I make it an official class here on YouTube. So I'm going to recreate that video for you here now. I'm not using any props. I don't really think you're going to need any of them. Um, but if you have them, might as well have them close by. We are going to begin lying down on our backs in a different variation of a twist. So as you lower down, you can bring your feet flat to the floor. And see, this is why Luna is not normally in my videos because I knew she was not gonna lay down for very long, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, with your feet about mat width distance apart, so wider than you would normally have them, let both knees drop over to the left, and then you're gonna hook and cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee. So we're looking to create lots of length through our right hip flexor and into the quad. And I like to even bring my right arm up overhead here. So keep pressing that right hip and that right shoulder down. If this feels funny or just bad in your knees, you can just release and do a regular laying spinal twist. Otherwise, this is where we will be for a few breaths. This is a great practice to do in the morning. When I had filmed this flow, it was early morning. So take about three more very deep belly breaths here in the pose. Getting your inhale to be just as long as your exhale. Making sure our feet are flexed. And go ahead and uncross the legs and we're going to float the knees back up through to center and drop them all the way over to the right this time. And you're going to hook or just let your right ankle rest over the top of your left knee. And this time your left arm can reach up overhead. Totally normal for one side to feel very different from the other. So for me, the side is very intense. The other side, I didn't really feel much. Asymmetrical poses are a really good way for us to learn more about our bodies, to see where there's an imbalance. Some slow breaths. Go ahead and uncross your right ankle, float your knees back up and take your reclined butterfly pose, Baddha Konasana with your legs. <sighs> Hands can soften over your belly. This practice will work a lot on our hips. We'll also get into our shoulders and upper back. So hip openers, heart openers, a little bit of balance as well, and some strength. So a well-rounded flow. Go ahead and lift your knees all the way up 
back together. Feet are about hip width distance apart. Let's find our bridge pose. Push into your heels, squeeze into your glutes, and lift up. So lifting your seats, your low back, your mid back. Hug your inner thighs in a little bit. Try to soften your shoulders. Relaxing even your jaw, pushing into your big toes. And let's release down inch by inch. Moving now into an anchored bridge, which is from foundation training. So it's not really yoga, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to do for low back. So you want to almost have your legs be straight, flex your feet so that it's only your heels touching the mat, push into your upper arms into the ground, squeeze in, and now see if you can root down through your heels and lift your hips up only like an inch or two off the floor. They're really not going to lift up very high. Think of dragging your heels back towards your shoulders. You are strengthening your hamstrings. Push into your elbows, one more big breath, and carefully release. Reach your arms up overhead, big stretch here. And let's bring our right knee in towards the belly. Go ahead and cross it over into a twist. Right arm extends out to the side. If you'd like to add on, you're going to straighten your right leg and maybe slide your left hand down towards the calf or the ankle. And if you'd like to add on further still, you can come into cat pulling its tail by bending your left knee, holding onto the foot with your right hand and pressing your right shoulder down. So there's a lot happening in this pose. You can absolutely keep your right knee bent. My leg is not perfectly straight. My hamstrings are quite tight. If you're holding on to your left foot, release that first. Bend your right knee, come all the way back through to center, holding here, and see if you can reach your right leg up towards the sky, and you can bend your left knee so your left foot is flat to the floor, just stretching into your hamstrings, and I like to just bend and stretch, so bend the knee and straighten the leg. One more time, bend and stretch. Reclined pigeon pose, cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. Think of pressing and reaching your knee away from you. And then you can draw that left thigh in. Getting a little deeper into the glutes. Try to relax your head and shoulders on the mat. And let's release. And we'll switch sides, finding that cat pulling its tail or that reclined twist on the second side. So right leg is straight, bend your left knee and you're gonna cross that thigh over your body towards the right. Extend out long through your left arm. This is option one. Option two, start to straighten your left leg. Option three, bend into your right knee Grab a hold of the foot with your left hand and really push and roll your left shoulder down. So you want your chest to be facing up and we're trying to stack our left hip over our right one. Even though there's a lot going on in the pose, can you still stay anchored to your breath? Oh, good stretch, Luna. <laughs> Hi. It's a lot easier to practice with cats than it is with dogs. This is why you've never seen her in my videos before. And release the hold of your right foot. You can bend into your left knee and bring it back through to center and we'll take that hamstring stretch next. So you can bend your right knee and extend your left leg up any amount, just holding wherever is appropriate. Can you move please? Thank you. Bending and stretching here. Bend your left knee and go ahead and straighten it out. Getting a little bit deeper every time. And taking that a few more times. 
And let's find our reclined pigeon pose. Cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee and see if you can pull that right thigh in. <laughs> what a good girl. And give it one last big squeeze and carefully release. Straighten your legs, push into your heels, and as you inhale, curl all the way up, lift on up, tall seat, tall spine, exhale, just a little forward fold here. And coming on up, let's find our butterfly fold and we'll add a bit of a side bend to this, something that I've really been liking or enjoying lately in my practice so soles of the feet together knees apart instead of going all the way straight forward reach out through your fingertips and then walk your hands over to the left as you fold so getting a little deeper through the side body try to let your knees be really heavy and go ahead and crawl the fingers over to the other side And all the way back to center. Let's lift on up, tabletop pose on hands and knees for a few rounds of cat and cow. Palms under your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And cat and cow, as you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, tailbone up. Exhale, round and contract, chin to chest. A few more like this, inhale. And exhale. Push into fingertips and knuckles. Get this in your upper back, your mid back, your low back. Last one. And into our puppy pose, walk your hands forward. Melt your heart down towards the mat. Keep your hips high over your knees. Lengthening out long through your arms, drawing your navel in towards your low back. And slide forward into your sphinx pose, lowering your hips to the ground, opening up through your chest, reaching long through your legs and really push into your toes. As you exhale, lower down and slide your hands back. We'll take three little baby cobras. Inhale, upper body floats up and exhale to lower. Two more, inhale, upper body only. Exhale to lower, last one. Inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale to release, okay, half bow, half locust. Reach your left arm forward, bicep along the ear, bend into your right knee, and hold onto your foot with your right hand. First, start to lift your left arm and left leg. If this is enough, stay as you are. If you'd like to go further, you're also going to push and kick the foot into the palm, picking everything up off the ground. This is a challenging pose. One more big breath. And release, let's switch sides. Right arm forward, bend your left knee, catch a hold of your foot with your left palm. As you inhale, lift the right side body first and then maybe add on by lifting the left. So working the entire posterior chain, all the muscles along the back body. <laughs> and let's release, press back, child's pose, hips towards your heels, arms reaching out. And let's find downward facing dog. Hands shoulder width distance apart, feet are hip width distance apart. Lift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Curling tailbone up towards the sky, reach your chest back towards your thighs. And let's reach our right leg up towards the sky. Bend your right knee and open up your hip. Keep pressing your right shoulder down. Let's step that foot through, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Step that right foot, 
bring the back heel parallel to the shorter edge of your mat and push into your feet in order to lift up through the upper body. As you bend into that front knee, you're gonna squeeze it open interlace your fingers behind your lower back roll your shoulders down and away from your ears humble warrior all the way down keep lifting your shoulders away from your ears even though we are in a fold and now stay low to the ground just let your hands come to the mat Keep your warrior two legs as you bring your palms to the center of your mat. Your right hand can go to the inside of your right thigh as you push it open. So a big stretch here. Keep sinking your hips. And let's push our right leg straight. Turn the right toes in into your forward fold. Walk your hands over towards your left foot. See if you can wrap your right hand along that left foot to the outer edge. Left hand can go to your low back, folding in towards your shin. Switching sides, left hand to the outer edge of your right foot, right hand to your low back. You're already facing the top of the mat, so just keep spinning in that direction. Three-legged dog, right leg extends all the way up and back. Keep it straight and squared this time. Three-legged plank pose, inhale. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, or Mukha Svanasana, and then downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Second side, left leg up, bend your left knee, open up your left hip and keep pushing your left shoulder and armpit down. So we're not trying to rotate through our shoulders or our chest. Virabhadrasana 2, step that foot forward, spin your back heel down and lift on up. And in this warrior pose, we're going to interlace the more unusual way. So you'll have your other thumb on top squeezing your shoulder blades behind you and then diving to the inside of that left thigh. Pushing into both feet evenly, so really press into your back right foot. This will help a lot. And staying low to the floor, bring your hands down, start to walk them towards the center and maybe place your left hand to the inside of your left thigh to push it open a little more while also sinking your hips down. Push into that heel, straighten the left leg and turn your toes in as you fold. Walk your hands over towards your right foot. I'm trying to bring your forehead towards your knee. Second side, walk your hands over towards the left foot. And we're already facing the front of the mat, so keep spinning in that direction. Three like a dog, straight and squared. Three like a plank, taking your flow. Lower, back bend and lift your hips up and back. From this down dog, reach your right leg up to the sky, keep it straight and squared, and we'll find our high lunge from here. So the right foot steps between the palms to the top of the mat, and then really hug in through the midline as you extend your arms up. We're gonna bring our right hand to our right hip, and add a side bend here as you reach your left arm up and over. Come all the way back through to center. Eagle arms, or just cactus shape with the arms, I should say. So elbows bent. As you inhale, open up your chest. And as you exhale, round and contract. So cat and cow in our high lunge. Two more like this. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Bring 
your spine neutral, now let's add our eagle arms, Garudasana arms, left arm under the right, binding once or twice. And we're going to step up to that full Garudasana pose. Left thigh crossing over the right, binding once or looping back with your toes as well. Good girl, Luna. Draw your lower belly in and up. Keep sinking down. So you're going to keep your arms as they are. Find warrior three with those eagle arms. Keep your hips squared so your left hip is dropping down. Standing splits, fingertips to the floor. Lift that left leg up even higher. Malasana yogi squat. Heels in, toes out. Sink your hips down as you bend your knees. Hands at your heart. Use your elbows to push your thighs open a little wider. Should feel that heat start to build. Downward dog. You're welcome to just hold here or take a flow. Forward to plank. Lowering halfway, upward dog, downward dog. Second side, left leg rises. Step it through. Push into the feet to float on up. You want your feet to be about hip width distance apart. Get grounded here. We find a side bend first. So left hand to your left hip, right arm reaching all the way up and over. Big side body stretch. Back through to center. Bring your forearms out in front of you, elbows bent at a 90 degree angle. Keep your legs steady as you inhale. Find a little back bend. Exhale, round it in, contract. Two more, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Coming back to neutral, your right arm wraps under the left. We're going to step up, eagle pose, Garudasana, right thigh over your left, maybe looping your toes back. I still have not figured out how to balance on carpet. <laughs> I'm hoping it just makes me stronger in the long run because it's really growing on me now. Keep your hips low, warrior three, Virabhadrasana three. Reach your right leg back, keep those Garudasana arms. Try to square off your hips. And keep the tilt going as you find your standing splits, reaching your right leg up even higher. Malasana, into that deep squat, heels in, toes out. What a good girl. Cuddle your pet if it's somewhere out in front of you. Trying to gather that strength. And downward facing dog. Maybe taking a vinyasa or you're welcome to leave it out if you're taking a flow. This is our last one. Plank, chaturanga. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Press into your heels and Balasana, child's pose, big toes together, knees as wide as you would like them, fold on down. Hmm. Let's walk our hands in. We'll come to take a seat, setting ourselves up for Gomukhasana, cow face pose. So you can cross your right thigh over your left. We're trying to stack our right knee directly on top of the left one. You might end up being a little bit more like this. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. But as much as possible, you want to maintain that cross. With your elbows out in front of you, right arm 
under the left binding once or twice. Maybe you work at just holding the pose from here or you fold on down. Two more deep belly breaths here. And start to lift back up. Let's find our square pose with a twist. So this time, rather than stacking your knees, you're trying to stack your right shin over the top of your left one. And again, there might be a gap here between um, ankles and knees, totally fine. You might just work from here. If you'd like to go a little further, you're going to twist over towards your right foot, bring your right elbow to the sole of that foot, left hand on top, and big open-hearted twist. Truly one of my all-time favorite poses. Trying to maintain length in your spine here. And release. Before we go to the other side, extend your legs out in front of you. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold. Coming all the way back up. Go Mukhasana. Left knee over your right one this time. Standing up or sitting up nice and tall, I should say, really feel both sit bones anchor and ground down into the earth. With your elbows and arms, you're going to wrap the left arm under the right one, maybe holding here or folding it down. pose. Stacking your left shin over the right one, flexing both feet. This time we rotate to the other side, facing over towards your left foot. Bring that elbow to the crease, right hand on top of your left hand, and really push into the palms as if you were trying to get them directly at the center of your heart. Press your shoulders away from your ears. Draw your navel in and up. And let's come all the way out. And this time you can take a Baddha Konasana fold, butterfly fold, feet together. Coming all the way up and extend your legs, go towards the top of your mat, arms out and we're going to roll down inch by inch. Might feel good to stretch your arms up overhead, setting ourselves up in Shavasana, our final resting pose feeling into all of the work that you've done in this relatively short amount of time. Notice where you feel this most in your body.
we'll start to deepen our breath. <laughs> Waking back up, making some gentle movements. Big stretch with our arms up overhead. And you can roll to one side. Coming up to take a seat. Oh, as gracefully as you can do that. And we'll sit up nice and tall. Hands at your hearts. Let's close with the chant of Om one time. Inhale to chant big breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this practice with me. Luna has had enough. Truth be told, I don't know if I'm going to do another class with my dog in the room. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing with this video because it did not go all that great. Maybe I'll do like a little blooper reel or something like that. Anyway, thank you so much for practicing. I do hope that you still got a lot out of this class and please leave me a comment down below to let me know how it went for you. And of course, I always recommend following this up with a short guided meditation, just a few extra minutes to spend on your mat for some extra clarity. You can do this video right here. Thank you all so much and I look forward to practicing with you soon. Namaste.